Volumes are used for all sorts of different things inside Houdini, so it's important that you know how to manipulate them. And one of those ways is by using masks on volumes. So let's look at how we can use masks to do all sorts of cool things with our volumes. So I'm gonna go ahead and just create the mask to start off with. So let's just do something simple. We'll drop down a sphere here. And with our sphere, let's uncheck that. Uh, with our sphere, let's go ahead and set this to a polygon and just up the frequency here. And then we can do a VDB from polygons. And we're just trying to make this a mask basically. So what we're doing with this, we're gonna check fill interior because we want to have it the interior filled out. And then with this, and in order for this to work as a mask, we don't want it to be a surface VDB. We want it to be an actual fog VDB. And the reason for this is because, uh, you'll see it here in a minute, but basically at the center of our, of our sphere here, we're going to have a value of one, and it's gonna fade out to zero across the rest. So that's essentially all a, ma a mask is, is just a zero to one range. So let's just, rename this to mask and we should be all set with our mask. So now we can create our geometry that we want to actually mask out. Let's just drop down a pig head. And with our pig head, we'll leave it on medium. We don't need the shader and just turn that off. And let's go ahead and just create a VDB from polygons for that as well. In this one, we do want to have it as a surface VDB. Let's drop the voxel size down to like point, uh, uh, 0.01 is fine. And then we'll set this to fill interior. And because we're gonna be manipulating this inside of volume VOP, if I just drop down a volume VOP here, let's go ahead and wire that in as well. If I jump in here, you see we already have this density that's set up and it's being piped out to our density in here as well. So let's just change our distance VDB from surface to density. And once we do that, we need to bring in our, our mask VDB over here. We'll wire that into the second input. And let's go ahead and dive into our volume bump. Let's make sure we're looking at it as well. And we can just add a turbulent noise in here just to give us something to, to go off as, as far as what we're masking. So wire in our position, and then we can just add this to our volume pop output. And before I go any further, actually, the project file for this will be available on Patreon. I'll throw it up there probably for free, honestly, because uh, this is super useful and I don't think a whole lot of people really know how to do this effectively. So I just want to share that uh, with everyone for free. So uh, let's go ahead and take this turbulent noise and let's do a multiply constant so we can control the amount that we have here. And we'll wire that in. We'll leave it on one for now and then we'll add this to our, to our density. So we can drop this down. You already see that we get something going on here. So let's leave it somewhere around there. And you see we have this eating into our geometry quite a bit. But as I said, we wanna mask this out. So the way that we do that is with a volume sample file node. So we'll drop that down and we'll just wire in the second input into the file name, the position into our sample position. So we wired our mask into the second input, remember that. We also named that in here, our fog VDB as mask. So we want to come into our sample file and change this from primitive number to primitive name. And we're gonna go ahead and just call this mask. So that same thing that we named our mask, we can name that whatever we want. This value up here, you can change that to whatever you want. But make sure that that matches in here as the primitive name. Now we can drop down a multiply. And we can multiply the output of our sample file into this. And we have our, our noise disappearing. And the reason for that is because we don't really have it a large enough shape here. So as I start to increase our uniform scale here, and I untemplate this, you should see that our volume is starting to show up. 
And as I said before, it's going to be a value of, of zero in the, in the center here. Or sorry, uh, a value of zero on the edge and a value of one in the center. So if we want to make this actually a harsher transition, is as I have right now, if I retemplate this, you see that we are, we're covering our whole our whole pig head here just to get some sort of a breakup in that noise. So let's confine it to uh, just let's say let's say just this part of our pig head. And you can see that we have uh, a little bit going on. It's kind of hard to tell, but we do have a little bit of that noise showing through. So if we take this and we actually do another multiply constant in after our volume sample file, and then, uh, like I said, this is needs to be a 0 to 1 value. So we want to clamp this back down to 0 to 1. We'll wire in our clamp there, keep this float value between 0 and 1. And we can start to crank up this multiplier, and you can see that it starts to bring in a harsher value there on our mask. So we start to get a nice mask going here. So that's, uh, that's the basics of how this all works. Let's go ahead and take a look at some other things. So we can actually do this with attributes on this, this um, VDB right here. So let's go ahead and let's copy this over. And let's take our pig head here. And let's do this all kind of with, or we can, we can use attributes, I should say, with this. Um, and actually, actually, yeah, I guess you can use them as a mask. So let's let's just subdivide out this pig head a couple times here. So let's wire this in. Let's make this pretty smooth and or pretty high poly here. And then we can drop down an attribute noise. So we wire in this attribute noise here. Let me take a look. I don't need this to be a vector. I'll just keep it as a float. And we can crank up the amplitude if we want. I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm going to change this actually from a range of values to um, a min max. There we go. So I want this, as I said, to stay between 0 and 1 because that's all a mask is. A 0 is just the black values, so we'll have nothing showing up there. And 1 will be the white values, and that's where all of our, our displacement should be showing up. So you can play around with this, whatever you want with that. You can even animate this if you want. Uh, but we want to check this ena enable ramp, uh, remap ramp. And then we can kind of add some contrast to this just to make this a little bit more evident here. And we can leave this as CD. But if we come to our VDB from polygons here, we can add this surface attribute. And this allows us to add like point attributes to our volume. So if I take this attribute and we call this point.cd, we can give this VDB a name and let's just call that, uh, we can just call it mask again to be, to be honest with you. And if I take our volume bop, I'm just gonna copy that over just so we don't have to remake everything. I'm gonna disconnect our second input there. And let's go ahead and take a look at this. So we don't need the second input we need the first input now you can see that we have this same thing going on and let's see if i can actually show this so if i go to our background and change this to dark yeah you can see if we look here where our ear should be we have this mask showing up so now if we take a look at our vdb from polygons we can see that we actually have two two vdbs going on so we have our our surface distance VDB and we also have this second VDB which contains the values or second volume I should say of, of values that contains our our point attribute of our color there that we're renaming to the mask so we as I said we can animate this as well so if I take this come down to the animation press animate noise this is gonna run a little slow but if I press play you can see that this animates along Let's go ahead and just uncheck that for now, get back to what we had. 
and we can let's go ahead and actually just delete these these nodes because we don't necessarily need those but we can take this noise and we can crank it up but we can also come in here to our attribute noise in here we can play around with this this ramp to get some different looks as well we can affect more or we can affect less and just kind of play around with the the different sliders here and you can get some different looks with that as well it's easier to visualize what's going on with the color attribute before you pipe it into the vdb with this but we can really crank this this contrast up now we should see only some displacement going on there in the cheekbone which we really see with that and get some cool different looks with that let's go ahead and jump out of this and this video is starting to Get a little long but i've got a couple more setups i've got three more setups here that i actually would like to go over uh, maybe i'll make a second part to this let's go ahead and take a look at this this first one here because we've been talking about vector fields quite a bit so i want to take a look at that so if you haven't seen those videos uh, essentially actually before i get into that all i'm doing here is just uh, the same thing i just have a sphere that i'm creating a vdb from polygons from um, this one is specifically for our vector field. So if I take this VDB, this is how you create a vector field. So you take a VDB node, you name the volume vel or velocity, and then you can add this displacement velocity acceleration, make sure it's a vector float. If you need a refresher on this, I do have a video dedicated to just this. So I'm gonna go pretty quickly there. Then we VDB activate this. I'm just pumping a box into that. And then we can take a points from volume from that box, get a bunch of points in here, use a volume trail, and we can start to see our, our velocity field here. So I'm object merging in just this velocity field mask into here, into the volume VOP. And in this volume VOP, I'm actually going to not do that. I'm gonna take a look at our volume trail. Uh, I'm just adding a curl noise in here. So if I just go ahead and wire this into our velocity output, you can see that we have just a, a curl noise in our velocity field. But I'm taking a second curl noise here with a higher frequency. So if you take a look at our frequencies, we have a pretty low frequency here and a pretty high frequency on our second one here. And I'm pumping those into a mix. And in that mix, I have our mask that we created that is driving our where where we have that second curl noise showing up and again if we want to change how this shows up we can take a multiply constant and a clamp as well And then we can start to affect the fall off of this. So if I crank this up, you see that we get this very harsh edge versus if I set this back to one, we get this nice soft fall off to this. But you can get some different looks to that and clank, uh, just crank up the contrast on this. So uh, pretty, pretty interesting stuff that you can do with this. I'm going to go ahead and cut the video off here. If you want to grab the project file for this, like I said, it's going to be available on Patreon. I'll throw it up there for free. I'll go ahead and hop on over there if you want to grab that and go through all these different project, uh, all these different use cases, I should say of this project file um, and then I'm going to make a second part here as well to this just go over these last two couple use cases because there are some interesting stuff with this as well so I want to make sure that we cover that but make sure you take a look at the project file um, grab that and go over um, how you can use these volume masking to do all sorts of different things inside Houdini because it is a pretty cool thing that I don't really see people really using all that much to be honest so Anyways, uh, if you want to learn more about Houdini, make sure you check out the other videos on my channel. I have a bunch of other videos going over a ton of different things inside Houdini, so make sure to check that out. But um, I also have a Patreon, as I said, where you can not only grab this project file, but a bunch of the project files for uh, pretty much everything that I've done over the last year. So make sure to check that out if you're interested. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and have a good day.